back everyone. I would like to welcome today a good friend, James Carroll, all the way from the UK, who invented this beautiful machine, the Nova Thor, and of course before that the Thor laser, amongst many other things that he does. Um, I want to start today's interview with asking about the special events of last year, because I know you speak at many events and many universities and you do a lot of research, but last year was a pretty special year for you. Um, can you tell us a bit more about those two major events that were yes. quite important? Milestones. We have two milestones, yes, from last year. Uh, one is that uh, the United Kingdom National Institute of Health and Care Excellence uh, started recommending our photobiomodulation treatment for cancer patients. So this is treating the side effects of uh, high-dose chemotherapy and radiotherapy. The side effects are severe, uh, and this treatment is successful in reducing those. And then the other sort of landmark item is that we got to do a congressional briefing in the United States. This is part of trying to convince Congress that they should be funding um, medical device and we hopefully photobiomodulation devices uh, for uh, as an alternative for uh, opioids. You know, the United States it's on the news. I mean, it's across many developed countries there is an opioid crisis um, and they need alternatives and uh, so we were there to persuade them that this therapy should be considered in the list of things they want to fund research on. And how was that taken? Extremely well. It's meant that we're going to be very busy this year. We've already got five uh, government level uh, and in medical and reinsurance companies, so I say, and medical insurance companies uh, to meet over the next few months as a result of that meeting. Beautiful. And I guess the natural leading question from this is we, you already have enough science and validation on, on this specific subject, pain, mm. chronic pain, let's yes. be specific now, on, on musculoskeletal chronic pain. Mm -hmm. They must have seen enough of that evidence mm -hmm. that's already collated and what's called you know, agreed upon science basically, yeah. that it does work. Mm -hmm. So it's not just anecdotal I feel better, therefore. Absolutely. This is so, so, so when the National Institute of Care Excellence, Health and Care Excellence do their reviews, yes, they're looking at large amounts of data. So we were able to show them 40 randomized controlled clinical trials. And those people who are in chronic pain, and I'm talking from personal experience, mm -hmm. where, I, where I was before going into the normal throat quite regularly and getting rid of all the medications and their side effects, mm -hmm. which even if the pain is gone but your brain is also gone, yes. you can't function properly. Absolutely. Let alone being in pain and, and, and knowing, or to be specific, not knowing mm -hmm. when this is going to end. Mm. Will I ever be better? Yeah. Will I be able to function and do my, my profession, do what I love, do whatever you love doing in life? That, that by itself, that state, leads you into depressive states, anxiety states, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Suicidal Plus, states. Suicidal states, and we have a lot of suicides yes. here in New Zealand, especially Absolutely. amongst men. Yeah. Um, as well as the known side effects of the medications, mm -hmm. as well as the fact that the inflammation, which is causing that chronic pain, mm -hmm. is still there, which is mm -hmm. hiding it. So all of these things massively disturb the quality of your life, mm -hmm. let alone the longevity of your life. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know the quality of life from the state of your mind, the state of your chronic inflammation that's spread to the whole body and the side effects of the medications. All of these things for that person have to be resolved. Mm. And this is a need, this is not an aspiration. This yes. is a need, we need this to be done. So you're telling me, and I know it from my personal experience and the studies that I've read, but you're telling me that more of us professionals, healthcare professionals, are seeing the light mm -hmm. and seeing the evidence Definitely. and agreeing that this should be standard of care Yes, now. scientists have known for a long time that this is good, and so and it's certainly been, been a, a major area of research for many universities. Yeah. It's just taking a longer time to move from the, from a university setting mm -hmm. to a clinical setting, and there are pioneering and more open-minded and more curious uh, medical doctors, dentists, uh, and therapists who are finding out about this. But it's been a, it's been incremental. And now with things like uh, the United States Congress taking an interest and government institutions like in the United Kingdom, the National Institute of Health and Care Excellent recommending these treatments, uh, that should change the trajectory from incremental to a sort of rocket ship. Fantastic, fantastic. And I guess that will open the doors from the, the mass 
infiltration perspective of, of the whole photobiomedicine. Starting with the pain, because it's the mm -hmm. most obvious and most immediate measurable outcome yeah. um, and most evidenced as mm -hmm. well, into other areas of not necessarily immediate need, but more aspirational desires of human optimization. Yes. Optimizing brain performance, optimizing physiology, optimizing muscle um, muscle building, etc., etc. Any visions for where that's going in, in the near future from what you already know scientifically versus what you foresee as coming? So in terms of using it as a preventative medicine, now the areas where the most work has been done is in sports medicine, or rather in athletic, what's the word I want? It's not medicine yet, because we're treating people, but they don't have an injury, they're not a patient. So that's is, it, is it a medicine? Rather than but we know what it does. There's uh, over 60 randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials on athletes, looking what it does for their strength, uh, for their recovery, uh, and their uh, ultimate performance. Yes. So, um, or should I say, strength and endurance and recovery. Mm -hmm. So that's been very well documented now. So this is helping them do their, obviously, extreme uh, work. And why not? That, uh, wouldn't it help if you like ordinary people? Uh, <laughs> mere mortals. As well, mere mortals. <laughs> yeah, regular mortals. You mean, uh, you're like, I'm not Usain Bolt. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> so, regular mortals yes. um, uh, in, in their daily lives. And it's quite clear, I mean, uh, from the, those of you who are lucky enough to have access, like, you know, people who work at our office have access yes. to a Nova uh, that, that it does have an effect on how you feel. Uh, just generally energy, sleep, small tasks, like uh, it could be climbing a, a several sets of stairs. If you're kind of late middle age and you've noticed you're getting puffed when you kind of go up a couple of sets of stairs, so somehow for re it, it, it's, it, oh, it's much easier. What's happened? Absolutely. So people's vitality and people's sleep are, seem to be anecdotally uh, very much improved uh, by having a, a whole body treatment. So that's anecdotal so far. We've uh, just as uh, added a new feature to this, which is the, for universities, which is a, for a placebo treatment to be delivered. So to prove this academically, you've got to have randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials. Uh, and in the next few weeks, we will have actually be starting to ship to universities a version of this with placebos built, a placebo kind of button built into it. So that... Uh, how, how would that work though? Like, well, if the red light doesn't go on, Thank you for asking the question. How do you know that <laughs> it's not placebo? Because okay. it so work. what we've done is we uh, built some heaters into this. So yes. you know, with this much light energy we put in, there is some warmth, as you know. Okay, so we've actually had to put some heaters in alongside the LEDs. So when the LEDs are not on, we get heat coming out mm -hmm. instead of the light to fake, uh, give a fake kind of treatment. It makes all the normal bleeps and noises and vibrations and but also a red light as well. But no red light coming out of the machine. The, the, the patients in the Novathor will wear a special pair of goggles. Right. And the goggles have got LEDs built into them and they shine LED light uh, towards your eyes. And when you lie in there and this thing comes on, you get the feeling that there's light all around you and you don't know. And both the active and the placebo, from. the active and the placebo patients both get it. They both have the same experience. These goggles are tightly fitting around the eyes. They've got very dark lenses in, so you can't really see. And they are designed to filter out uh, the red light, so you can't see the lamps come on. And you do get this feeling, regardless of if it's in your active or placebo mode, that you're getting a real treatment. So it feels like it. It sounds like it. It looks the same to both parties. Perfect. Well, that, that, that would be a great step forward yes. to prove to, I wouldn't say naysayers, but a mm. lot of people who want to see evidence first before believing mm. versus people like us who believe first mm. and then create the evidence to prove what is yes, visible. To, to verify. And, and, yes. Yeah, to verify. We know it. We can see it. We can feel it. Uh, we understand the quantum science of it, mm. of it all. Well, fine. Well, let's, that's let's, what let's prove that scientifically. There's a word that doctors often use to describe, I've seen it with my own eyes, and they uh, call it um, uh, 
uh, empirical evidence. It's yes. like I've seen it. And people, it sounds like a great <laughs> science word, empirical. It just means by observation. In other words... And by I mean, agreement. Yeah, and by, and by agreement. I observe it, you observe it, do we yeah. agree? It's empirical, yes. yes. If we don't, it's not empirical. Yes. But has it happened? So, <laughs> it sounds great. So when a doctor wants you to dismiss something, they'll say, oh, that's just anecdotal. Yes. And yet, when they see it themselves, they call it empirical. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I mean, I, I always do the analogy of the simplest and most core fundamental science of all sciences, maths. Mm. One plus one mm -hmm. equals two. Well, technically, if you speak to a true mathematician, and I did, mm -hmm. that's not absolute truth. It's just what we agreed upon mm -hmm. as a system and a method to measure units so we can move forward and, and have a method of, of analysis, which I'm fine with. I'm mm. grateful for that. But it, it isn't absolutely so, because technically, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Two units of 1 make a new unit of 2. Mm. That's another unit, that's another 1. No, you're uh, playing we, with we, we can go and philosophically analyze this. About we, yes, we have to come to agreements, but it, nothing is absolute empirical evidence. Ultimately, the evidence, especially with human healing, we're not going to talk about treatments here, because you're mm. a scientist, not a doctor. I'm a doctor, but not a doctor of everything. So mm. we, we, I don't want to talk about every single disease as if it's a a separate thing. Technically, most diseases in the human body are the same due to the same causative factors, a breakdown and imbalance in the normal physiology. Mm. Cellular physiology within a tissue, within a system, the whole thing starts to break down, affects other systems because everything is nothing more than a bio biofeedback loop, basically. So how about we talk about healing in general rather than treatment for one disease, one label disease at a time. Mm -hmm. And healing comes in many ways, but primarily through biosignaling. The cells biosignal to each other within themselves, mm -hmm. mitochondria biosignals to, to, to the nucleus. One cell Then there's uh, gene expression the and One, things happen. That, so that's yes, it. signals to the nucleus, gene expression, downstream effects of that is that proteins do things and protein, more proteins are made perhaps, and then Downstream things, you start making new tissues, or you make and more either good tissues or bad tissues. You make cancers. Good, you make the, this the, or the, that. Yeah, maybe the uh, the lymphocytes of the neutrophils that have uh, diseases. So yes, yes. So this is and good things can turn back. Yeah, to turn bad. Nitric oxide is neither good nor bad. Nitric oxide in blood vessels causes vasodilation. That's a fantastic thing. Too much nitric oxide inside the mitochondria causes oxidative stress. So mm. it's not is nitric oxide good or bad. It's where and how much and so on and so forth. So we want to release it out of the mitochondria and we want to balance things out. And this is how I've seen energy healing, if you want to call it so, quantum medicine, photobiomedicine, as the method to literally balance physiology, to modulate, which is, which is why I love the, the, the more agreed upon term now, photobiomodulation, because we're modulating things up right now. We're not cutting out a process. We're modulating and balancing out what is natural. Yes. We don't want no oxidative stress. Oh, okay, oh, sorry, no free radical oxygen, you want some because we're that's going natural. for homeostasis. Thank you. That's what we're going for. Some some free radical oxygen is necessary for yes. for vital functioning. Too much is oxidative stress. So it's balancing out. And the only way I can see that now we know it, now we know more through the work of people like you guys, um, and, and all the scientific which I love. I love science. Mm. But I don't want to get stuck with people believing that if it's not proven yet, it's not true. Well, we can only prove in the future what is already true. Well, there have and been, and in, and in the world of photobiomodulation, and I just did another review of the data today, there's now 700 randomized placebo-controlled clinical trials in this field. It's huge. 700 RCTs. So it's significant, and by far, by a huge majority of them have a positive outcome. So it's real, and this is, um, as opposed to empirical, uh, this is objective evidence, that's scientific yes. evidence, the way the scientists like it. So it's objective evidence as opposed to, uh, uh, to empirical evidence Perfect. that's working. And sufficient enough for you to personally believe, I mean, I know, we would have to take into perspective, of mm. course you have a bias towards your, your, your uh, creations and I totally believe in them and that's why I flew all the way to the UK to come and talk to you guys and push hard to, to get it back here in New Zealand. As in, would you go into that into this bed repeatedly for the rest of your life and recommend it to your own personal family? Obviously I've grown up with them. It's a difficult question because it would be like I know it's un difficult un because unknowing I know you what know I know too much now. And exactly. Much, so but. so that's unknowing what I know now. You know, I've, I've because I've been in this field yes. for thirty two years, 
uh, and I've learned a lot about health and wellness. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of being in the field, then uh, I, I suppose it would be, if I didn't have all of those experiences, I might not be somebody who would have considered myself somebody uh, trying to, um, not worried about my, my long-term health, and not everybody is, and you know this, that most, of, most people wandering around your town here are probably not thinking about these things. I might have been one of those people. What would have persuaded me to do this? I certainly you were talking about people in pain earlier on, yeah. and uh, chronic degenerative conditions and you start like joints begin to hurt for example which are muscles get weak and things like that and by the point I could reach a certain point in middle age and I think oh, I'm feeling old I might have then thought you know I keep hearing about the 30 when people get in and they come out feeling younger uh, and uh, I might have been persuaded about that time I might have been quite a cynical person yes. a skeptical kind of person who had no insight on health and I might not have been rushing towards it but if I had been a health conscious person by some other pathway, then absolutely. That, that's kind of the answer that I was expecting because it's, uh, it's based on what you know today. Mm. I, I just want to take away the, the natural bias that you're actually part of the company, mm. you started the company and all these things. So the business part aside, but the knowledge part, yes. Knowing what you know today from all the science that you've seen and experienced personally. It's part of a complete healthy lifestyle. Yes. Where you've got diet and oh, exercise absolutely. and attitude dealt with, uh, which are three components of, of healthy life. You know, this is another component. If you're into a good diet or into sensible levels of exercise and if you're into having a good attitude, uh, then uh, this is a, a, another cornerstone of part of your health, and well-being and personal yeah. development. So thank you James, really appreciate this time and you taking the time actually after such a long trip with, I think you were lecturing for the last three days in a row. Well, try, the last, days. try the last three weeks which were Chicago for a day and New York for a day and New Jersey for a day and Miami for four days oh. and Los Angeles for a day, San Francisco for three days and then home for three days, then Greece for the weekend to do lecturing, not on a holiday, uh, and then back home for 24 hours and then fly to Perth and do the lecture, and then fly to Melbourne for a day, and then Sydney for a day, and now Auckland for tomorrow. Oh, thank you so much for your innovations, for your, for your time, for your energy, and for helping us serve the world better. Right. Thank you, mate. Thank you for your evangelism. You're welcome. <laughs>